So I have a lovely 1685 Pentax uh, zoom lens which stopped focusing. Uh, after the camera took a tumble off a, a worktop and landed nose down on the floor, um, had a filter on the front so it smashed the uh, the filter and uh, damaged the um, the petal hood. But other than that, the lens was uh, was unscathed. However, uh, a couple of years later, the lens started doing odd things like failing to focus uh, and failing to um, adjust the aperture when it was uh, taking a, an exposure. So took it apart and found that uh, there's a little row of contacts here and behind each contact is a spring so that it keeps the uh, the contact pressed onto the contact on the camera body and some of those had fallen out and also there was a little spring holding the uh, the aperture lever here pulling that back and that had come off so um, so what I did was I got a, a donor lens, a, a faulty lens off eBay which cost about £10 including postage and uh, I dismantled the, uh, the the donor lens and what I'm going to do is show you how uh, to basically take off this plate and how to get these contacts out and get those repaired with these parts which have come from the donor lens. So some equipment I've got here. I've got a uh, very small Phillips screwdriver. It's Phillips, not Posi Drive, and um, jeweler's screwdriver. If you've got one the right size, will probably do. <clears throat> I've got a very small jeweler's screwdriver. Um, got some lens cleaner, a pair of tweezers, a uh, very soft brush, and uh, and a blower, and uh, and that's about it. So we just take the. Uh, Take these screws out, put them somewhere safe, and the trickiest part is getting out these, uh, getting the plate off without all the contacts falling out and, and disappearing all over the floor, which is what happened to me the first time I did it. So as I said before, the the, the most difficult part is is getting these contacts out because once you've taken these uh, these screws out, you can very easily just lift up the the uh, the mounting plate the whole thing will come up but the problem is these contacts are in a little nylon frame which looks like this and they're not attached into the frame in any way it would have been so easy for Pentax just to put uh, a little sort of indentation or a little flange on these circular holes so that the contacts would snap in and stay there when you lift it out but they don't and in fact uh, on this lens, um, I don't even think the springs behind these contacts were attached to the contacts. Now on the uh, on the much older lenses I used as donors, you can see that the springs are attached to the contacts. So you can see just down here there are some, for example. So the springs are kind of clipped onto the base of the contact. Now, uh, that didn't seem to be the case with this modern 1685. Um, so that when I took the mounting plate off, not only did all the contacts fall out, but all the springs disappeared. And the springs are about a millimetre wide and about three or four millimetres long, so um, they're very hard to find once you've lost them. Um, hence the need for the donor lenses. And it would have been a very easy uh, for Pentax to make this, so this was all sort of clipped together in one unit that you could easily interchange, but they haven't done, uh, so we have to kind of find a way around it. So, what we've got on this lens here is you can just about see around each gold contact, you can see the, the, the kind of rim of the, the, the frame. So, what we've got to do, unfortunately, we've got to hold the frame down with the screwdriver and lift up. On the mounting plate, so you can see the mounting plate's loose. Uh, what you'll find is that these uh, uh, these two contacts here for the for the motor, um, they're quite tricky to, um, to to get out. In fact, you might even need a, a magnifying glass, as I do, to get the the screws out for those. You don't have to take them out, but you you, you can do. Um, so these uh, these two autofocus contacts they kind of clip into um, 
uh, another frame underneath or they sort of push into another uh, pair of contacts underneath and if we pull those out so you can see that the autofocus contacts they just uh, they just kind of clip in and they just sort of pass the contact through from from these two little uh, female contacts here so you can lift that out makes it a bit easier to get the plate off you don't have to but it makes it a bit easier to lift so you don't get the sudden uh, sort of jolt when when they come free so holding uh, down on the edge of the nylon plate kind of pushing the contacts down I mean you can lift the plate up and there we have so that little nylon frame that I mentioned together with the the contacts in it and I want another one to look out for is this little spring here it seems to be uh, a grounding spring for the uh, for the for the plate for the mounting plate and that it actually makes contact just uh, where are we? It actually makes contact just here. <clears throat> so it doesn't actually connect to any of the contacts, but if you're not very careful, you will lose that. This is the uh, this is the return spring for the aperture lever. And there was no uh, ridge on this post to hold it in place. So just a bit of sharp movement of the lens I don't think you'd even have to drop the lens and that would pop off um, so what I've done is just put a little spot of glue onto that post there um, otherwise with a bit of rough, rough movement or if you dropped a, you know, a bag that the camera was in that could quite easily come off by itself there is a little ridge on this post here so the the return spring will stay securely on this one the uh, the one that's attached to the the aperture adjustment ring, but it will quite easily pop off there. So as I say, just a bit of glue. I mean, I just used a bit of um, uh, stationary glue, actually nothing uh, nothing very strong, just to just to give it a little bit more traction as to hold it in there. So what we've got to do is we've got to get this frame out and keep the contacts in it. And I find the easiest way to do that is to put your fingers over it like this, turn the whole thing upside down and maybe do it over a box or a tin or a lid or a tray or something like that so that when you lift that out you should, with a bit of luck, get all your contacts now I haven't, two of them as you can see have stayed in there as you see the, uh, the spring of one and the entire contact of another has stayed in there However, that's still a much easier thing to manage. Um, and you can see how the, the contacts just sit within the frame there. Uh, so one of the problems I had first time I repaired the lens was that I lost some of the springs. Uh, and so some of them I replaced by cutting existing springs in half, uh, stretching them out to make them twice as long. Uh, it's not great because you don't get the same tension on the contacts. It's not a great way of doing it. It's not a long-term way. Uh, the other, you'll see here, there's two springs that are different colours. They're actually steel springs uh, taken from the little post, the little sprung post that holds your watch strap onto your watch. Um, turns out uh, that that's got a, a spring in it, which is quite long. You can cut that into about four of these. Um, and uh, it's a it's a, about a millimeter in diameter, so it's the right size to fit on the post. But they're stainless steel, so if you get any humidity, any condensation inside the lens, and that rusts, uh, you'll lose the electrical contact. So that was a that was a temporary solution, not a good long term I idea. So I'm going to get rid of all of the existing contacts and just leave me with the frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit in contacts that I've got um, from the donor lenses. And I'm just going to drop those into place. And you can see the size of the spring versus the size of my finger. And I've certainly not got big hands by any, uh, by any sort of measure. So what I've got to do is hold this frame with the springs upwards, otherwise they fall out. And then I've got to match that up with the lens held upside down in order to get all these contacts into those 
tiny little holes. And there we go. That's now in. And you can see even being really careful with it, you can see that one of those has actually popped out this one here at this end. So what I find is it's, it's easier to juggle them around than it is to just take it out and put it back in again. So I'm just going to lean the little frame back because these are on springs as well. It does give you a little bit of leeway to move them. And then finally I'm going to take my Uh, kind of, I call it a grounding spring, which goes into this sort of arch here. The frame back in place with all one, two, three, four, five, six screw, uh, contacts, plus the grounding um, spring, and now I'm going to got to negotiate that back through these little holes in the mounting plate. So I'm just going to kind of drop that on in the roughly the right position. You've just got to kind of get the aperture lever through that little slot. And you see what's happening is as that's mounting plane is going down. It isn't quite lining up with the little nylon frame. So again, you've got to do a little bit of wiggling just to kind of get that back into place. You might have to use your, your small uh, jeweler screwdriver just to give that a little bit of nudging, just to get that lined up properly. What you also find is that the contacts for the um, for the autofocus power um, they <clears throat> fit into their own little slots. So actually you've, you've, you're kind of fighting with them as well. So what you can do is look down. If you can just see there. You look down through these two holes here. And you can actually see the autofocus contacts. And they'll help you to get, uh, to get the whole thing lined up properly. Now if you're thinking, well why don't you just put the frame into the mounting plate first. And then drop the lens onto it that way, wouldn't that be easier? Because you don't have to negotiate getting the nylon uh, frame into the, the metal holes of the mounting plate. That's true. The problem then is this little grounding spring doesn't attach to anything. It doesn't stay in the hole that it's in and there's no frame on this side to hold it in place. Um, so that becomes uh, a real nuisance to get that connected up. So uh, basically what I'm saying is there's no easy way to do it. The only solution really is uh, is patience and uh, some very small tools, good pair of reading glasses, a magnifying glass um, and more patience and eventually with a bit of jiggling and fiddling you will get everything to kind of fit back into place and, and the, you know, the tolerances on the engineering of these things are incredibly fine so they fit absolutely precisely um, and in no other way and with a lot of wiggling and jiggling one of the things I had to do was get the little jeweler screwdriver down inside the power contacts for the autofocus and I had to just because they are on sort of flexible mountings I did have to give them a little gentle little wiggle just to get them in and you can't force any of this the the absolute critical point uh, of doing all of this is at every stage being very very gentle not forcing anything back into place just giving it just enough pressure so that you can feel when it clicks back in you can see now that these contacts are all uh, back as they should be with that nylon spacer around them. Uh, what I'm hoping is that the, um, the little grounding spring which is sitting just there, I'm hoping that's stayed in place and what I'm going to do now is pop the autofocus contacts back in and these hold in place quite firmly, they just sort of slide down. So what that enables you to do now is with only these two screws back in and only the autofocus contacts just pushed back in enables you to 
pop it back on the camera and make sure that it works. And that's a nice demonstration of why we do a little test run first because uh, no, it doesn't work. So I'm going to have to pop all this back out again. So I suspect that what has happened is during the process of jiggling something has come loose and I'm going to bet that it was the grounding spring. No, in fact you can see one of the contacts has been has gone in at a funny angle. Can't really it's difficult to see, but here we go. You can see one of the contacts has gone at an angle, and if you look at what's happened to its spring, it's gotten trapped in the wrong place and the spring has been bent right over. Uh, when I bought the donor lens on eBay, and in fact the spring has now completely come off the contact. Now when I bought the donor lens on eBay, I actually bought two donor lenses. Now I know why I bought two donor lenses. So finally, I managed to get the frame balanced back on the lens again with the little grounding spring in place and what I've done is used a, a magnifying glass that has this, uh, this kind of super magnifying bit on it. So basically a, a powerful magnifying glass to look underneath the frame and make sure that all the springs are down in their proper little holes and that nothing is uh, is twisted out of place. And now I'm going to pop the <coughs> mounting plate back on. And the other thing to be careful of when you when you're reassembling is you've got this um, silicon weather sealing that sits around the mounting plate and uh, it, it's seals onto the camera body when you put the lens on and one thing that's very easy to do is when you're kind of fiddling around with all the contacts and everything it's very easy to push the edge of that silicon in and what will happen is it's quite malleable so when you push it in it doesn't spring out it stays there so you do just have to check that that's nice and straight all the way around as well otherwise you'll get it trapped underneath the mounting plate and then your water seal is no good and your mounting plate won't go on properly. So I've reassembled the lens and the contacts again and this time managed to get everything to fall into place quite easily and and as I said I think the engineering is so precise that when it fits together it fits together per perfectly and with very little effort so if you haven't to put any uh, effort or, or, or strain or you feel like you're having to push everything into place then uh, there's something wrong and just stop, backtrack, take it apart, start again um, and then you won't end up uh, bending or breaking one of your contact springs like I did and the question is does it work, does it focus, let's find out yes it does everything seems to be working perfectly, does the aperture uh, does the aperture work perfectly? Yes, it does. Excellent. So, uh, all repaired, all good. Now I can take the lens back off. Two more important things to do at this stage. Number one uh, is just replace all of the other screws around the mounting plate and around the autofocus contacts. Secondly, you can't fiddle around with all of this without getting your fingers all over the back element uh, and so that's what the cleaning solution is for and the brush uh, and I'm going to give that a good clean before uh, I pop it back on the on the camera. Thanks for watching and uh, good luck fixing your lens focusing and aperture problems.